Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Mark Green here, the Diabetes Diet Guy, talking all things diabetes, healthy living, and general nutrition. Now today's video is about a new medication that has just been approved in America, which falls into the GLP-1 agonist category, which if you're familiar with any of my videos I've blogged about before, and on the website, diabetesdietguide.com, we have a whole section dedicated to this class of medications. Now this particular medication is promising weight loss up to 52 pounds, which is a big weight loss. In some people, over 20% of their body weight. Now this is big news in treating diabetes, um, type two diabetes, I should say. So is there any basis to this or is it just one of these marketing ploys? Stay tuned, because we're gonna dive into it. Okay, so the medication we're talking about comes from Eli Lilly, which is one of the pharmaceutical companies, and it's called Terzepatide. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, this is a GLP-1 agonist um, medication, so it falls into that category. Now, these medications help to reduce the spike in glucose levels after eating, and this um, medication class essentially mimics a hormone that your body already produces called GLP-1 and GLP-1s are satiety-inducing hormones. They make you feel full up, basically. Your body releases it after you eat, and it's one of the hormones responsible for basically that bloatedness and essentially telling you to stop eating. So the reason this medication class is quite effective is because it helps people to reduce their portion sizes. As a result, they start to lose weight, and we know that the majority of type 2 diabetes cases, not for everyone, but for the vast majority, is driven by the fact that people are just carrying a bit too much weight. So obviously, if we can treat the underlying issue, which has is helped people lose weight, we're essentially treating the underlying disease and therefore we're turning back the clock and allowing people to be able to essentially be in better health and actually improve their diabetes control. Now, the great thing about this GLP-1 agonist class is it's really a developing field of research. So initially, when these came to market, you had to take them twice a day in order to get the desired dose effect, um, and the results weren't amazing. People would lose a little bit of weight and the HbA1c would reduce to a certain extent. But as research and money has gone into the field, they are just getting better and better to the point now where you can take one once a week and it is more effective than the original medications that came to market having to take them twice a day. So how is Tazepatide able to deliver such great results from a weight loss perspective compared to its counterparts in the same category? Well, the key with tazepatide is they have gone one step further. See, GLP-1 is just one of your satiety-inducing hormones. We have loads of them. So what they've done is they have added an additional satiety hormone into the medication to help people feel more full up, um, reducing their portion sizes even further, and also reducing their glucose levels, again, even further. Now, like all medications, they obviously have quite a tricky name. So this additional satiety-inducing hormone is called GIP, glucose-dependent insulotropic polypeptide. But I think we'll just stick with GIP for now. So we have two for one, essentially. Now, with this medication, we have three different doses. We have five milligrams, 10 milligrams, and we have 15 milligrams. As you can imagine, as you increase the dose, the results continue to improve. So for the people on the lowest dose at five milligrams, they were seeing weight loss at around the 35 pound mark, which equates to around 16 kilograms, which is just over a stone if you deal with old money in English weight folklore. The maximum dose, which was 15 milligrams, elicited a weight loss of 52 pounds, which equates to 24 kilograms, which again is hovering over three stones in old English money. Now, the good thing about the trial that they were studying this in is they obviously compared this to a control group. So when we, see, when we say control group, what we mean is a group that weren't given the medication. Now, they did lose some weight, but it was only around two kilograms. So we can see that this tazepatide is significantly greater than control. Then when we start comparing it to the other GLP-1 agonist medications on the market, again, it is going above and beyond in terms of its results. Keep in mind, when we're talking about successful weight loss, we're usually dealing with targets of 5% initially and then 10% of your overall body weight as a real success. 
from dietary interventions, typically over a fairly long period, usually about a year, we see about a 3% weight loss, which as a dietitian, it breaks my heart, but that's the facts. And that's because people have to change behaviors, have to change habits, and ultimately stick to a diet in order to get results that they want. So ultimately, the diet that you choose, you have to eat like that lifelong. As opposed to the medications, I'm never the big fan of going down the medication route, but if it's available to you, um, and it's effective, then, and ultimately it's getting you the results that you want from just taking a once weekly injection, this can be a fantastic option. So Zepatide managed to help people lose between 16 at the five milligram dose, up to over 20% of their overall body weight. So that is very big weight loss compared to those other conventional methods that we use like dieting, which over the long term for most people isn't actually that effective because a diet is only as good as the person that can stick to it. Now the American Diabetes Association has approved this medication, which means it will probably be hitting the UK shores in due course. Um, so I suspect hopefully we'll be seeing this medication rolled out in the near future, available to patients, um, and ultimately it might just put me out of a job because <laughs> that's some good weight loss results. Um, now, I haven't read the exact study that they did this in and I think just having a look at the laptop here, yeah, so they did it in around two and a half thousand participants in this phase of the trial. So fairly significant and you can usually get a good idea of how effective that's gonna be in the wider population, but we do understand that's not in hundreds of thousands of patients that um, you like to see from a really robust trial, but usually the medic, these big companies like Lilly, they are quite thorough in their research protocols and, and in order to get a medication to market, obviously it has to be stringently tested and pass a lot of safety checks. So the fact that it has been approved shows that the safety checks are there um, and ultimately it's doing what it says on the tin. The trial that Lily are running is called the Surmount trial. So although they have the data now for weight loss, they're gonna continue the trial for type two diabetes progression. So that'd be really good to see in terms of blood glucose lowering effect. Um, I think it's gonna run for another 72 weeks. So that'll be a interesting finding to look out for. So if you're interested, it's called the Surmount one trial and Surmount clinical trial program. So you can Google that and take a look. Um, but yeah, ultimately it's looking like it's really moving in the right direction. And if it can help people treat the underlying cause of diabetes and it turns back the clock, maybe pushing some patients into diabetes remission or significantly improving their blood glucose levels, then it can save the NHS and other healthcare bodies a huge amount of cost. We spend a lot of money on preventable lifestyle related diseases like type two diabetes. And when we say preventable, we don't just necessarily mean it will never happen. You might still go on to develop it, but it could also significantly delay the onset. And obviously for every year that you can delay it, that's less money for the healthcare system to throw into it. 10% of the NHS budget is spent on type two diabetes. Um, and you think around 80% of those cases are preventable or delayable. So any medications that can help turn back the clock on the disease progression is only gonna be a good thing. And that's before we even start focusing on the patients themselves, improving their quality of life, improving their health. Um, so sometimes we do get just uh, pigeonholed into thinking economically, but really it's a people business. So are there any drawbacks? Well, we know with this GLP-1 agonist class that some of the side effects can be quite unpleasant for patients. Because it's a satiety inducing hormone, if you have too much of that hormone circulating, you can get significant bloating, nausea, and in certain instances, you can even get diarrhea and vomiting, which is usually an indication to stop the medication. Now, a lot of our consultants in the hospital that I work in will say that if you experience mild symptoms, it's a good thing because it shows that you're responding to the medication. Some people don't get any symptoms and they might not be a responder. How this will work out with the Zepatide, we're not sure because it seems quite potent and it has that additional um, satiety hormone, the GIP in there as well. So as I say, more bang for your buck. So we might see more responders. Um, in terms of the actual reported numbers, I just have them here. So it looks like, a, depending on the dose, somewhere between 24 and 33% of patients reported nausea, which in fairness is probably quite common. Usually you find that when you initially give the, med the injection um, on the first day, the symptoms are the highest, and then as the week goes by, the symptoms start to tail off until the next dose, which makes sense, right? Um, between 18 and 23% of patients experience diarrhea, which isn't desirable really. As I say, we'd usually take patients off it if they're experiencing diarrhea. And probably one that people really don't want is vomiting. So between eight and 12% of patients experience vomiting, which 
Again, probably a bit higher than we'd like to see, but at the same time, we just need to play the patient in front of us. There's no harm in trying these medications, right? Um, and oh, and last one is just some uh, constipation. So between 16, uh, between 11 and 17% of patients experience some constipation. So the other end of the spectrum to the diarrhea. Um, I guess they were trialing, they were comparing that to pre and post taking the medication. But I think the big ones really there are probably the vomiting and the diarrhea. Nausea is not pleasant, constipation is not pleasant. Um, but those other two are the ones that would really be focusing on in terms of a contraindication to taking the medication. Now, of course, taking maximum dose might initiate some of the more severe side effects. So it might be that just because you experience some of these side effects that you don't take it at all, some doesn't mean none. So you might just take a little bit less. So there you have it, guys. Um, new medication hitting the market soon in the UK, already approved in the US, Tazepatide. Look it up if you want to have a bit more information about it. Looks very promising, huge weight loss. We'll wait and see how that translates into glucose lowering effects. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for today. So if you found this video useful, please subscribe and like the video. Helps us get up in the algorithm, which means we can help more people. Um, and ultimately talk through all things diabetes and nutrition. Uh, if you haven't done so already, head over to the blog at diabetesdietguide.com. We have uh, basically practical guides and information to help people manage their diabetes and give them more information about their disease. Uh, so it's all about helping the patient, essentially. Similar to what we have on this YouTube channel, but we have written versions as well for people that aren't really into videos, although by definition, if you're watching this video, um, you're probably into videos, but we also have a lot of the blogs written out as well um, in text format. Anyway, we'll leave it there, so I will see you later.